Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habita fillah continue on in our study of Usul al-Sitta By the explanation or according to the explanation of Imam Zayd al-Madkhali rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'ah one of our known ulama of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a who spent his life in service to Islam and spreading the ittiqad of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a. And the reason that I'm emphasizing that is because those are some of the attributes of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are those who assist the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they call the people to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the madhab of the salaf al salih and they don't compromise that. That that is their tariqah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to traverse that path because it's so there are so many challenges and there are so many new newly invented matters which can deceive us and take us away from the path. And in this regard, as I see, I, I witness so many individuals, and I do understand why it can be confusing for a lot of the youth on where to take knowledge. And this is why there is uh, an importance, or there we must emphasize to a greater or lesser extent the importance of taken knowledge from those people who are hopefully known. And if there are not known, hopefully Allah has favored you with some of the criterion to be able to distinguish between truth and, and falsehood, or at least ask if something strange that you listen to, to a particular speaker that you like, you enjoy, but yet they say something strange, what goes against what you've learned or what you've read from some of the major scholars that has been translated for you or whatever the case may be, then you should ask someone you trust who knows, uh, who is a trustworthy imam in your locality or a trustworthy da'i or a trustworthy talib al-ilm that is known for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to assist you because it can be so confusing. There are so many people who have talbis that they have a type of t deception uh, that maybe much of what they believe and what much of what they propagate is according to the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then they go astray in important matters of interpretation and that they may explain away and destroy some of the usul of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. For example, many of the contemporary takfiris that they, some of the contemporary takfiris have general aqid of Ahlul Sunnah regarding issues of Tawheed, except that they may give priority or dis make another category of Tawheed, for example, Tawheed al hakamiya or something like this, and they give that and, and, and kind of politicize uh, Tawheed to such an extent that they end up making takfir of the general Muslims and the Muslim leaders and the Muslim policemen and everyone in between. And this is because they're, politi uh, politi they're politicizing the uh, creed of Ahl Sunnah and mixing it with many contemporary values. And this can cause them to distort and go astray and lead others astray. And this is what we see time and time again time and again and I often find when you associate with people sometimes those things become exposed if they are people that are you are not they're not known to you in depth especially with social media you interact in certain groups and this and that and the other and you find that certain individuals in fact really don't share uh, the full Salafi values and the full madhab of the Salaf, that they may go against important usul because of uh, political issues or because of their desires. So this is why it's very important to know and understand who the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are by their characteristics and that they 
uh, don't fear the blame of the blamers and that they are those who adhere to the book and the sunnah according to the madhab of the Salaf al Salih. Ridwanullahi alayhim. So we left off in the treaties talking about the Oli of Allah. And Muhammad ibn Abdul Hawa rahimahullah ta'ala said, and there is his statement, meaning the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 54 O you who believe, whoever of you should revert from his religion, Allah will bring forth in place of them a people he will love and who will love him. Uh, Sheikh Zaid ibn, uh, ibn Muhammad al Madhali said, So similar to this ayat is the ayat from the from Surah Al Ma'idah, O oh, you believe, whoever of you should revert from his religion, Allah will bring forth in place of them a people he will love and who will love him, who are humble towards the believers, powerful against the disbelievers. They strive in the cause of Allah and do not fear the blame of the critics. That is the favor of Allah. He bestows it upon whom he wills, and Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. And in fact it is, and do not fear the blame of the blamer, or of the, the critic. And in this ayat, as we're mentioning, it, it, it uh, talks about the important characteristics, or an important characteristic of Ahlul Sunnah and the Oli of Allah, Azza wa Jal, and that they are merciful and humble towards the believers and that they hold on to the book in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through their adherence and their love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and love for his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and love for his deen they hold on to that and Allah will love them and that those who may have been from amongst them or may not even be from amongst them, Allah does not need them. And Allah's deen does not need them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us. He does not need uh, anything that we can provide or offer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower and our razaq he's the provider. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ghani and al alameen. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything from his creation. But his creation depends upon him. So therefore, those who go astray from the path of righteousness and from the book and the sunnah, that they are not hurting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if the believers may find disappointment and might find some mild setbacks or whatever the case may be, but they only harm themselves, and Allah will replace them with those whom He loves. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those whom He loves. So the Shaykh says, therefore, these ones are the only of Allah in reality and in truthfulness. They are adorned with those sublime attributes. Indeed, Allah has described them as those who perform jihad in His path, not fearing the blame of a critic. That is, they perform jihad by themselves and cause others to perform jihad as well. And this meaning jihad, jihad and nafs, and all the other forms of jihad. It doesn't mean that an individual goes fighting uh, by themselves in legislating like the takfiri, mubtadi'ah, uh, khawarij, and these other neo-takfiri groups like ISIS and Boko Haram and Shabab and other takfiris, al-Qaeda, wa ghayrihim that they believe that every individual can be a part of their movement and their struggle, which is not even worthy of calling jihad. It is more rightly and more befitting to call it terrorism and extremism and evil than it is to associate it with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must uh, make sure that we understand that. Uh, then the Sheikh says, they establish the prayer, they pay the zakat, and they are the people of mercy and compassion with the people of Iman, and they are people of humility with them. And that uh, is a trait that, you know, the Salaf even spoke about uh, tremendously because, of course, it comes from the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and likewise the Salaf of this Ummah, that from an Athar of uh, either it was Umar or Ibn Umar, I believe, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhumah, 
uh, regarding the Khawarij. And he said, Okemaqal, Yaktuluna ahle iman, wayatrukuna ahle othan. That they fight and kill the people of Iman, the Khawarij, because they make takfir of the believers and then they fight them. So they're fighting only, they deal mainly with other Muslims that they take, make takfir of them, declare them disbelievers, and make their blood lawful, and then proceed to attack and kill them. And they leave the polytheists. So this was the menhaj, the methodology of the Khawarij. And if you look around the world, even the contemporary ones, follow that sunnah of the Khawarij, in that when you look at ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, who, who are they killing mostly? They're mostly doing suicide bombings and killing people in the marketplace. Killing, they rarely attack and have the courage to attack even their enemy soldiers, but rather they're always victimizing those who are civilians. Uh, how many Boko Haram uh, bombings have they put in the abayas of women? And they went into the marketplace and then there was nothing but bloodshed. In the place of business, blood, guts and gore, and the destruction of life and property and wealth, all which are the traits of the Khawarij Qadim and Wahadith in the past and in the present. Wallahu musta'an. And then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, along with that, they are the people of might against the people of disbelief and transgression because it is not befitting for the believer to humble himself in front of the disobedient sinners and the disbelievers. These attributes are the attributes of the awliya. So whoever claims that he is a wali of Allah, the glorified and exalted, then he must seek to actualize whatever Allah has described the awliya and it, with the with uh, with Allah has described the awliya with in the ayat of Surah Al Maida uh, and Al Anfal and other than them. Sheikh uh, Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab Rahimullah Taala said, and there is his statement, meaning the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. So here the Sheikh is just giving you ayat after ayat to show you who the what are the characteristics according to the Quran as far as the only of Allah, the the pious ones, the friends of Allah, who, who those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, what are their attributes? And what better place to go than to look in the book of Allah, who is the one, he, you know, his divine speech, to know and understand what those characteristics and traits are. And Allah says, unquestionably, for the close friends of Allah, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. They are those who believed and were fearful of Allah. Surah, uh, Surah Yunus, uh, verse 62 and 63. Uh, Imam Zayd ibn Muhammad al-Madkhali said, So like these two ayat are the two ayat from Surah, uh, from Surah, uh, Surah Yunus. And they are the statement of Allah, the mighty and majestic, Unquestionably, for the close friends of Allah, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. They are those who believed and were fearful of Allah. Indeed, Allah described them with two magnificent attributes. How many attributes? Two. He said the first attribute, it, uh, it is the attribute of Iman. And everything that is, uh, obligate, uh, that is obligated by Iman from the foundations, rights, subsidiary affairs, and requirements of the religion. Mm -hmm. So Ahli Iman, or the attributes of the awliya, is that they are from Ahli Iman. So we don't say just because we see a magician disbeliever, or a mag magician mubtadi'a, or someone who does sihr, or something that they do something and they have something which seems to be from the unseen, or Allah gives them a little bit of knowledge of the unseen that they steal from the shayateen, that we should not be amazed by them, but rather the only of Allah, they will manifest the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many of the people in contemporary times, the murjia, the people whose iman, who believe that deeds are not a part of iman, that you know, you're either a, a full mu'min or you're a disbeliever. No, no in between. And it's sufficient to say that, the, to say the shahada, shahada and you're a full uh, mu'min. This is the aqidah of the murjia, you know, those women who say, you know, I don't have to wear hijab, you don't know what's in my heart, 
those brothers who are walking out of the club with their girlfriends, known for zina, known for smoking weed and stuff like this, who say, bruh, don't judge me, I'm a believer. So this is the itikad of a murjia. If they don't feel really any sorrow, they don't feel any shame, they don't know they're in sin, but they rather, they believe that it's sufficient to just uh, have some a part of Iman in their hearts without actions. The second attribute of the awliya the Sheikh mentioned that was mentioned in those ayat, it is the attribute of taqwa, of fear and reverence, which is obedience to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoidance of his prohibitions. The definition of ibadah. And he said and then the Sheikh mentions that it was said by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah as he said, Al ibadatu kulma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min a'mal al zahir wa batin. Or kama qala Sheikh Islam. He said that uh, a, a, in another translation, and probably a slightly different, uh, or this is the same al a comprehension, a comprehensive noun or term referring to everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from statements and actions, whether they are done privately or in public. So that is a, a very all-encompassing or a general uh, definition of ibadah, is that it includes all of those actions which please Allah, which love Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And that is how uh, Ahli Iman, how they define uh, 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 ibadah. That is how Ahl Sunnah defines ibadah. And that's a general uh, term for, for what is considered worship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the mutatahirin, loves the muttaqin. So taqwa is a characteristic of the people, uh, uh, of it's a characteristic of, people, of the people of Iman, and it is an act of ibadah. We know that from, that's what, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that people purify themselves. So that shows that purification, if done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if done to perform those other acts of worship like salat or, uh, you know, salat and so forth, and then the spiritual purification as well, then this is something that Allah loves. So it is considered what? It's considered ibadah. It's considered worship. And it fits under that general ta'rif or that general definition Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned. So he said, this is how Shaykh al-Islam defined it with this comprehensive definition. So the ayat that we have, previ that we have previously mentioned, the ayats uh, from the scales upon, form the scales upon which the actions of the creation are to be weighed. So that, that's why you can't say someone's a wali, or oh, so-and-so is a wali, and he's just a dirty people, a dirty person physically and spiritually and mentally. Because the, the, the oliya will be of those people who are clean, uh, you know, in all of those things, clean in their body, clean in their spiritually. Those are the real friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and protects and supports because they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they worship him and him alone. And they have the attributes of Ahle iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us with those characteristics. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And forgive us of our many sins and shortcomings. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, then the Sheikh, he says, He said, So then the good actions and corrupt actions and the correct actions and the erroneous actions will become clear. These ayah from amongst the proofs that distinguish between the awliya of Ar-Rahman who believed and observe taqwa and the only of shaitan who abandoned obedience to their Lord and following their Prophet وسلم, they answered the call of the shayateen who called them to his party, his his, so that they may be from amongst the people of the blazing fire of hell. Indeed, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala faced groups of people who claimed that they were the awliya and people of taqwa who they claimed that they were the Oliya and the people of Taqwa, whilst they were falling into major shirk, such as worshipping the idols and statues and obeying the magicians, conjurers, and charmers. This was due to their slight and compounded ignorance, their lack of knowledge, the weakness of their intellect, and their evil opinions. Along with that, they claimed knowledge and scorned the Muwahideen, the Ahl Tawheed, Ahl Iman, the followers of Tawheed and accuse them of misguidance, 
out of their extreme stubbornness, haughtiness, and preference of the worldly life over the hereafter. And think about how many people you know personally that speak about individuals that you know strive to adhere to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know they are known for khair and spreading kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the Salaf but the people call them Wahhabi the people call them Jamia the people call them Merkhaliya the people call them uh, you know all these strange uh, names to deride them to belittle them and uh, even if they are known for stricting Stick, sticking strong to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and propagating it and being a person of wara and taqwa, you know, God-fearfulness and piety and all those attributes, at least they, they're known for this because you see this exhibited in their behavior and the way they act and in their spreading of knowledge. And this is the, these are from the characteristics of Ahl al-Ilm the people of knowledge specifically. Although you have, of course, awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst the general Muslims as well. But the people who are most, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the most is the ulama. And an illustration of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors the ulama and favors people one over another in a beautiful statement, uh, Shaykh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhali Half of Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, بِحِكْمَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَلَتِ يَخْتَدَتْ أَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْأَمُورُ يَجْعَلَ الْأَمُورُ يَجْعَلَ الْأَمُورَ فِي مُوَادِعِهَا وَاللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى قَدْ خَلَقَ بَنِي آدَمَ مُتَفَاوِتِينَ وَأَنْزَلَهُمْ فِي رَتْ فِي فِي رَتْبِهِمْ مُخْتَلِفِينَ فَمِنْهُمْ مُلُوكٌ وَالْأُمَرَاءُ وَمِنْهُمْ عِبَادٌ وَالزُّهَادُ وَالْعُلَمَاء وَمِنْهُمْ عَامَّةَ النَّاسِ مِنْ جُنْدِ وَالْأُعْمَالِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ وَفَضَّلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ وَسَخَرَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So he says that know and may Allah have mercy upon me and you that Allah the mighty and majestic gives his his rahmah, his special rahmah, his special mercy to whomsoever he pleases. And he possesses all the, the greatest virtue and benefit, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gives his mercy to whomsoever he pleases from amongst his servants and from his, 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 his fadl. And he gives some of them uh, preference over others from his hikmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and which he gives everything, in, puts everything in its rightful place, every affair in its rightful place. And Allah, Jalla wa ala, created the children of Adam with different levels, meaning everyone has a different level, different status. And he, he put them on, you know, in, in different, categories in different levels. They differ. Some of them are kings, some of them are princes or leaders, uh, and some of them are just, you know, strong worshipers. Some of them are the people of piety, and some of them are the scholars. And from them are the general people from amongst the soldiers and the workers, and other than them. And he says, and he, he places them in different, uh, you know, different status between them. And he said, <laughs> فَمِنْ ذَلِكَ قَوْلَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى 
قول هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أول الباب. So then the Sheikh mentioned, he said, in one of the greatest things that your Lord, Jalla wa Ala, after the prophets and messengers made peace and blessings be upon them all, is the inheritors of them, I meaning the inheritors of the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu salam, which is ahl al ilm, the people of knowledge. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnesses uh, all throughout his book and from, uh, you know, witnesses that they are, they have, they're the people of fadl, the people of greatness, that those are the people who fear him the most, those are the people, those are the awliya. If they are, if they are truly ulama, meaning they're ulama of righteousness and khair was sunnah, he says, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Kitab al Kareem, say, are those who know and those who do not know the same? Are those who know and those who do not know are they the same? Verily, the people of knowledge will reflect. They will, they will reflect upon this. So meaning that there's a difference between Ahl al-Ilm and the general Muslim and Ahl al-Ilm and other than them because they are the inheritance of the prophets and they inherit not money but they inherit knowledge and spreading that knowledge and all the be beautiful benefits of a righteous person practicing and spreading knowledge. And then he mentions they're not, how, is it possible that the ignorant one can be like the person of knowledge? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, those who fear Allah the most from his servants are the ulama. So this is a sifat of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how can there be anyone better then the people who fear Allah the most amongst the, the rest of the, the Muslims after the prophets, alayhim after salatu salam, it would be, after the prophets and their companions, would be the ulama and the, the, the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were ulama. They were ulama because they knew the deen and they trans uh, transferred the deen to us. So it lets us know that from the sifat of the awliya is you know, those and those closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who fear Allah the most and they are the ulama, as the Prophet, alayhi salatu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And the Shaykh mentions uh, regarding those ayat that this shows that we know the ubad, that there are those who uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of their ability. But the problem is, is if someone is on jahil, on ignorance, then how can they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most effectively and properly? Whereas the ulama, they combine, the ulama, the salihin, the righteous ones, combine ilm wa amal. They combine knowledge and deeds. And this is, and, the, and what does this produce? This produces taqwa. And this is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is khashitillah. This is the full, so they actualize that to the higher level because they combine uh, ilm wa amal compared to the one who is jahil with amal. Because the jahil with amal, they can go uh, astray very easily. And often you find people who are ignorant and they are astray. So either they can go astray easily or they are astray. And so it's a very dangerous characteristic to be ignorant. But the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real haqiqi, the full awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't say that there isn't different levels and there, you know, and everyone is, is different in their status. But however, the full haqiqi, those who actualize it, that fear uh, Allah the most, are the anbiya, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kareem, showing us the importance of that knowledge to be one of the awliya, to be raised up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala tabarak wa ta'ala, yurfa'i Allah al-ladheena amanu minkum wal-ladheena utu al-ilma darajat. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Allah raises those who believe from amongst you and those who are given ilm, knowledge, darajat, different levels. So their different levels are different levels in reward and different levels in this dunya. Also the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسَهُ بِهِ عَلْمٍ سَحَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ That whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for them the path of Jannah. So that shows us that علم, علم النافع, علم الشرع, علم the knowledge of the religion is those, one of the wasail, one of the most important wasail, one of the most important uh, means for coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and having the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being one of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the one who has knowledge and practice then they uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them darajat and he loves them and what's very important I was just reading just recently uh, I believe it was our Sheikh Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak he mentioned Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak al Bedr Hafizullah Ta'ala uh, I believe it was his state oh, no no it was a statement of Bin Uthaymeen in fact Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'a fa'ida kabira and he mentioned that he said and this was during his time he said what is basically a, tra a travesty and this is a paraphrase is that you have so many students of knowledge who are so weak in ibadah that they don't even equal the general Muslims. That they're less than because of their manners and their sins. So this is very important for us to pay attention to and be fearful of and to get ourselves together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya ladina amanu lima tukuluna ma la tafalun. Oh, you believe, why do you say that which you do not do? That's serious. That that's, should bring some fear to us. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and shortcomings and help us to rectify our affairs and be of those who practice ilm. Because it's a combination of ilm wa amal. If you just have knowledge, you have, you've memorized, you've done this, you can easily go astray still. And you could be a follower of your desires. Or even go to the extent of being a worshiper of your desires. A person who has memorized that doesn't protect them from the hellfire, doesn't protect them from kufr and shirk. They could have memorized, but they don't understand. They could have memorized and they don't practice. They could have sought knowledge and they don't practice. And that's the whole point, as the Salaf used to say. And this is the sifat of the ulama. Of the ulama. They said, what did the Salaf used to say? They said that... Uh, Al-Amal Thamarat Al-Ilm That deeds are the fruits uh, of knowledge. So it's very important that you gain knowledge and you practice. And what did Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab say in his treaties, his other treaties, in uh, Asul al Thalatha in the beginning? When he mentioned the four um, Masail, he said, And then he used Surah Al Asr as Dalil for that. So he said, You know, may Allah have mercy upon you. It's important, it's an obligation that every Muslim. Uh, knows four things. He said the first thing is knowledge and it is knowing Allah and it's knowing his messenger and the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. The second thing is practicing that knowledge. So there you go. There's ilm wa amal. A thalith, the third thing, is a dawah to relay. So a lot of us, we're in a hurry. We want to give dawah, but we're not practicing. We're not practicing ourselves. Ta'maruna nasa bil bir wa tansawna anfusukum wa antum tatluna al-kitab afala ta'kilun. This is serious. And and. and when I say this, it makes me want to stop giving dawah for my own sins and my own need to rectify. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Kitab al Karim say in this ayat? He says, Ata'maruna nasa bil bir, do you call the people to be pious with tansona and fusukum and you forget yourselves? kitab and you read the book? Afala Don't you think? SubhanAllah. 
subhanallah, that's that's very powerful ayah. And one, one day maybe we'll just have a dars strictly on that ayah. We'll go to the tafsir and we'll go to the aqwal of the salaf and the, the mufassireen from the salaf to see how they explain that, to go into depth about that. But look at that. That should give us some khashiyah, this ilm. That, that's why it raises the people. Because It wasn't because they memorized and they just sacrificed their time and their efforts. It's because they practice. That's what distinguishes the ulama, uh, you know, the, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the awliya of shaitan. And that's what distinguishes the ulama of, 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 of righteousness and the ulama of su, the ulama, the evil scholars. Because it's a difference in practice. And then the Sheikh mentioned, he said, with regards to this, that there are people who have knowledge and uh, that Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab, he faced these people who were arrogant and ignorant and stubborn uh, to their idols, even though they said the Shahada and even though they claimed to be awliya. So that was the point. And then he mentioned, he said, uh, he mentioned the statement of Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala and he was talking about the extreme uh, ignorance of the Sufiya. He said, Then the affair with most of those who claim knowledge and claim to be the guides for the creation and preservers of the Sharia became such that they deemed it necessary for the awliya to abandon following the messengers. This went to the extent that whoever followed the messengers was not considered from amongst them. And this is what we we're kind of pointing to in the beginning is that there are those people who believe they don't have to practice the sharp. And what's worse than that, they believe that they are the most adherent to their religion. Some, even in their books, they write Hadethana uh, on Rabbi something like this, you know, it was related to me from my Lord, meaning that they get some sort of revelation directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do things and to act on things and to leave off acts of ibadah that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us how to do and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never left and he sacrificed an ibadah. But these people think they're the only of Allah and as if they're better than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as if they are not confined by the Restraints and constraints of the sharaf. Wallahu musta'an. Then the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Zaid mentioned, he said, So these extreme Sufiya would say, Indeed the messengers came with the Sharia and conveyed it to the Ummah. Therefore the Sharia, according to them, was for the common folk, whilst the knowledge of the Sufiya was the reality. That's the real knowledge. That's what they claim. So the meaning and truth is what the obligatory duties were revealed to them in disarray upon their hearts from Allah directly. As for the Sharia, then it came through an angel from amongst the angels to a messenger from amongst mankind. And the messengers conveyed the message to the Ummah, but according to their corrupt allegation, meaning the corrupt allegation of the Sufis, there is an elongation in the Sharia, and there is doubt in its isnad, its chain of narration, according to the Sufiya with regards to its authenticity, or lack thereof, and its truthfulness, or lack thereof. As for them, then they claim that Allah informs them of whatever He wants from them in their hearts. They're inspired by the message. This is exactly what a lot of the Christians who don't even believe in the literalness of the Bible or what have you, that what you'll find if you talk to a lot of Christians about the Bible and stuff, they'll say, well, it's inspired by the Word of God, or it is the inspired Word of God, is what they say. So meaning that it's not exactly revelation, it's not to be taken literal, but it, it's inspiring. So we take and we pick and choose what we want. We leave off the Old Testament and we practice what we want from the New Testament. And, you know, they pick and choose. It's based on their hawa because it's inspired. It's whatever inspires them. Well, Allah is that. And this is what the extreme Sufi, Sufis, they do as well. Uh, as for them, then they claim that Allah informs them of whatever he wants from them in their hearts. So they allegedly take from Allah directly and they claim that they are the only of Allah. But they have lied concerning that. So whatever has come from the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, contains all good. Because they leave the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow their inspiration. To say, uh, what's his name, Kabani or one of these others, that he, he doesn't need to pray. He can just transgress all bounds of the shara because he's one of the beloved and loved ones of Allah. 
Then the Shaykh said, so the reality is that whoever abandons following the Messenger uh, والسلام, has become misguided without a doubt. And whosoever abandons Iman and Taqwa and leaves them off, then he is from amongst the people of disbelief and hypocrisy. Because Allah, the Mighty and Majestic, described the awliya as those who believe and observe Taqwa, and whatever is contained in the terms Iman and Taqwa from great meaning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined what it means for us, but these heretics heretics they defined things in according to what inspires them they pick and choose from the deen whatever they want wish they can go outside the deen if they wish they can do the most extreme things that according to the deen will be considered a major grievous sin but it's lawful for them because they're not confined by the shirk because they believe they are the awliya Muhammad al-Radhuha said, and they consider it necessary for the awliya to abandon jihad. So whoever performs jihad, then he was not from them. And they considered it necessary for them to abandon iman and taqwa. So whoever adopted iman and taqwa, then he was not from them. O oh, our Lord, we ask your forgiveness and pardon. Indeed, you are the one who hears the supplication. Uh, Sheikh Zaid mentioned, that is the one who adopted iman and taqwa according to uh, these ones who claim to be scholars, whilst they were the people of shirk and, and innovations. They caused people to rely upon whatever they claimed from knowledge, and they lifted money from the people's pockets with falsehood and misguided them away from the straight path. And then uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al -Kareem, that they may he bear their own burdens in full on the day of resurrection and some of the burdens of those whom they misguide without knowledge. Because they misguided people. So that's the scary thing, that if you are a dai, one who calls to something, and you call to something other than the book of Allah and other than the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and other than the method of the salaf, you're in a very dangerous status. And you can be responsible not just for your misguidance, but the misguidance of those who follow your corrupted and innovated minhaj. Wallahu musta'an. And then the Shaykh said, So whoever adopted Iman and Taqwa, then he was not from them. Meaning that these people had corrupted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and abandoned Iman and abandoned Taqwa and said that that made them awliya. Meaning he is not from the awliya of Allah, as was claimed by the enemies of Allah whom this Iman confronted with the truth and renewal of whatever he studied from the signposts of the pure and glorious uh, Islam. So it shows us, Sahabat Tifilah, that it's very important to look for the real characteristics of the awliya and to strive to actualize those characteristics in our life by gaining sound Islamic knowledge based on the book and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the understanding of the Salaf as Salih and practicing to the best of our ability. And that will get us to be from amongst the awliya of Allah if you are really striving in kunzum sadaqeen, if you're really truthful and you're really going in that direction. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings and bless us to be of the awliya of our Rahman. Rabbana la tazuk qulubana ba'da the day tana wahab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta wahab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all, forgive us all, protect us all, preserve us all, increase our risk, provide for us, bless us, save us, help us, assist us and support us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.